The focus of research in my lab is to try to understand the impact of selfish genetic elements on genome evolution. The selfish genetic element is anything that manages to increase its transmission to the next generation, but without doing something good for the host genome. In fact, most of the time, they're downright harmful. When we hear about parasites, then we all have a natural tendency to cringe, you know, but parasites are all around us. We're doing just fine. A lot of the uh, important adaptations that uh, organisms have are to control their parasites. And sometimes those adaptations then are co-opted for a new function. So that ends up being a motor for evolution. For my graduate work, I studied Y chromosome evolution in fruit fly species. Most of the DNA on Y chromosomes are these selfish genetic elements, and Rochester came on my radar because it's a hot spot of research activity in this area. This work on selfish genetic elements is being done all around the world, but we remain kind of a center for this kind of work. Transposable elements, meiotic drive chromosomes, repetitive DNA, selfish elements in speciation, the role of selfish elements in aging, reproductive parasites, microorganisms that distort sex ratio. It's quite remarkable to have in one department so many people who are working on this uh, important topic. Ordinarily, each gene has a 50% chance of making it into their offspring. And so meiotic drivers are things that can cheat this normally fair process and bias their transmission to more than 50% of offspring. So in my lab, we're interested in the effects that selfish genetic elements have on the evolution of genomes. So as part of our research, we go and monitor the bluebird nests with, with people who maintain nest box trails. And then after the birds have fledged and left the nest, then we look at the parasites. Of course, you have the birds, you have their parasitic flies. The flies have their parasitic wasps. The wasps have their parasitic bacteria. The bacteria have their parasitic viruses. That's a whole community of Russian nested dolls of parasitism. There are very practical applications that we can develop based on what we learn from natural selfish genetic elements. So for example, you can engineer something that you can deliver to mosquitoes that will make it so that they're resistant to the malaria parasite and so you can limit the transmission of malaria to humans by applying this technology. People like myself working on these little parasitic wasps might discover something that has relevance to human medicine or agriculture, whatever it might be. And that's one of the beauties of science is uh, the applications can jump between fields in very unexpected ways.